I'm proud of you. If you're applying to college using the Common Application and you want someone to walk you through the application, do it with you, and celebrate you, then you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Jordana, I'm a college counselor, and I make videos on getting into and getting through college, and today I'm going to give you tips to help you avoid some of the biggest mistakes that students make when filling out the Common Application. We're gonna jump around through this app and I'll hit on the questions that usually cause confusion or where people make mistakes. Let's go. First thing to do is to create an account. If you're applying to college for the first time, choose the first year student button. So you're gonna use the same name that's on all your official documents just so that they don't get confused and lose your stuff. So there are five tabs that we'll be using. First tab is financial aid resources. It just has tips on applying for financial aid and information on scholarships. And you should definitely take a look at that when we're done. The next tab is the My College Search tab. Maybe you know which colleges you wanna to apply to, maybe you don't. I mean, not all schools are on the common application. You never know. So if you've been typing in and it's not appearing, because it's not on there. The search filter here is amazing. You can search for colleges by state or country, how far away it is from your home. You can also filter by requirements. Like I don't want recommendation letters. I don't want application fees. I don't want SAT scores. You can use that as a filter or you can say yes to all of those things. Once you've found the colleges that you want, click the add to my colleges button and they will save that college for you so that you can work on their application once you're finished putting all your colleges in. There are also links showing you each college's application requirements and links to the college's admissions office and the college's website so you can have the most up-to-date information. So go ahead and put your colleges in right now. I'll wait. Now, if you click on the My Colleges tab, you can see all the colleges that you're thinking about applying to. You can add or remove schools as, as many times as you want, but you can only have 20 colleges on your list at the same time. And after you've submitted, you will not be able to remove those schools from your My Colleges list. So this tab is really important, so we're definitely gonna come back to it. But I just wanna show you real quick the Common App tab. The Common App tab is one of the major perks of doing the Common Application. Anything you put in there will go to the colleges on your list once you hit Submit. The first section on the Common App tab is the profile. That's where you're just going to put in your name. If you have a nickname, like your name is William, but everybody teachers call you Bill and that's what they called you in the recommendation letters. Make sure you put your nickname down. Otherwise you don't need to. Also put in your birthday, your email, your phone number, your address, your year that you plan to start college. When it comes to putting down the address for your home address, I don't know if you spent time between two different homes, put the home that you spend most of the time in. Uh, you can put in your other home addresses in the family section later. Now, some of these questions can seem kind of nosy, like really, <laughs> but I promise you they will not use it to discriminate against you. In fact, they just want some diversity. You also only need to put a social security number if you're applying for federal aid. So undocumented students and international students, you can skip that question. And if you're a US resident and you don't have a social security number, you can choose US permanent resident or refugee, and then you'll be able to upload a copy of your green card or proof of your refugee status. International students, you can put in visa type F1 student. If you're requesting fee waivers, if you ever got an SAT fee waiver, a reduced free lunch, foster care, uh, adoption, if you get public assistance, housing, um, if you're homeless, like you could be eligible for a fee waiver. You can see all of the requirements here. But another nice thing, you only need to put it in once and then all of your schools will be aware of that and you won't have to keep telling them. If you're not eligible for a fee waiver, I have good news for you too. There are about 450 colleges that do not charge application fees. That's some good news right there. So you might wanna go back to that search box and search under that filter because you can apply to colleges for free. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't wanna keep their money? The common application fee waiver also isn't the only waiver. Many colleges also offer their own application fee waiver, so check with your colleges. The next section on the Common App is family. Sometimes parents' marital status can seem a bit tricky, but think of it like this. They're asking about your biological parents. If your biological parents are no longer married, they're divorced, even if they're now remarried to other people, you still put down divorced. Then they wanna know your parents' name. Uh, the nice thing is if you know one parent, but let's say you don't know the other one, you can just click I don't know. And then you don't have to answer any questions about them. They also ask for your email address. A tip about email addresses, you might wanna create email addresses that's professional, some derivative of your name without actually being your name that's focused on college and scholarship stuff. It just keeps things really organized and neat. Then put in your phone number. This section seems nosy too, but I'm telling you, they are just trying to understand you and your background better. And it could even lead to some benefits like academic supports and financial support. So give them as much information as you can. It will not hurt you. It can only help you. Parents' job is sometimes a little bit confusing. If you don't see it there, just uh, describe it, put it in there, say whether they're employed or not. Uh, for the highest level of education, some schools are granting legacy status if you're a child or sibling of a current student or alumni. On the other hand, if your parents never graduated from college, you are a first generation college student. Some colleges want to celebrate you. They want to connect you with other college students in the same situation. They want to offer you support. Uh, so let's 
let them know. The next section is the education section. And this is where you're gonna put in your most recent high school. If you cannot find your school once you go to put in your high school, then select, I don't see my high school and type it in. But they have a long list of high schools. They even have homeschool co-ops there too. The year you started high school and the year month that you'll probably graduate high school. You can check any of these boxes that apply. Did you graduate early? You'll be asked to enter an explanation of up to 250 words if you graduated late or if you took time off. Just tell them why and how you were affected. If you went to more than one high school, you can put that in too. And then they also wanna know why you left. If you took college class and you received grades and credits that don't appear on your high school transcript, like dual enrollment or college now, you can put that in as well, but just also don't forget to contact the college and ask them to send your transcript in as well. Then hit continue. Class size GPA rank, it's usually on your transcript or your local counselor can tell you whatever you do. Don't guess. Account for all GPA scales, no matter how weird your school is, so don't worry. And you can tell them whether it's weighted or unweighted. And your transcript probably won't include the classes that you're taking right now in senior year. So this is your chance to let them know, especially if you're taking AP or honors classes or accelerated classes. But whatever you do, don't take classes in the fall so that you can put them down here and then drop them because some colleges will actually contact your counselor and ask them why. Awkward. Next section, honors. So you can add to five honors. If you have no honors or awards, some schools don't give out a lot, no problem. But don't forget, they don't have to be just school awards. They could be outside activities, community, civic awards, house of worship awards. You can also put summer programs that you went to, especially if it was competitive and you had to apply. If you got any AP scholar awards, put that in there. I mean, they can see your scores already, so they'll know, but you can put it down because that is an honor. If you got help working on your application from a community-based organization from any of these, yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> Tell them, sometimes they know about some of these programs and especially if you had to apply, that looks really nice. So they ask you about your career interests. If you know what it is that you wanna major in and the highest degree that you wanna earn, go ahead and put that in. It's not permanent. You'll probably be like all the rest of us who changed our majors a number of times and that's perfectly fine and they're expecting that. But at the same time, Try to create a theme with your application and try to make sure that whatever you put down as your major, that it matches whatever else is on your application. And remember that whatever you put in goes to all of your colleges. If you're undecided, that's fine. It's definitely an option, but just between you and me, like just for you, for your ambition, for your excitement, your planning, it is worth it to keep looking into that just on the side. So. The next section on the common application is testing unclenched. I bring good news. 730 common app member colleges are test optional or flexible. So if you're planning to send your scores to some colleges requiring testing, but then you're also planning to not send scores to test optional schools, this is key. For now, when you're filling out your application, say yes. Put in your scores so that the colleges that require it will see it. But when you're submitting to test optional schools, come back to this page and say no to remove the test. That will remove any scores that you entered before from your future submissions. And then when you need to add back your entered test scores, just go back again, click yes, that you would like to report your scores, and then add back which specific test you want and all of your sections and answers will reappear. But just remember that if you do have to report your scores, colleges still want the official score reports sent. And international students, if you choose yes to the question about leaving examinations, like you have national exams given at the end of high school, these questions will pop up next. For US students, this will be your next screen reporting your scores. You can send them all, but here we're just gonna report the best. And for APs, most colleges only give you credit for three, fours, and fives. So if you need to list scores, only do the ones for three and above. Next is activities. Okay, so now this is your time to show off. Like you can add up to 10 activities that you've done outside of the classroom, but do not feel pressured to put 10 because when you think about what they're actually looking for, you probably shouldn't. Traditional activities, but you can also put down music lessons. If you serve at church or temple or mosque, if you have a podcast or a channel, you can even put down if you have family responsibilities, like if you have to care for your younger family members, and if you have a job or an internship, or if you do volunteer work, all of that counts too. Now you can use the organization's official name or you can create a descriptive name. For example, if you were like president of the koala club, nobody knows what that is. You might wanna say, I am president of the Koala Mentoring Club or just the Mentoring Club, just so that it's really clear. You also get 150 characters to describe your activity. My tip, put some numbers in there. If you raised $5,000, tell them. If you won third place, tell them the number of the record that you broke. If you supervised 10 kids, tell them the impact of what you did. The main goal of this section is to show your passions, your interests, your responsibilities, and your leadership experience. Word limit can be a bit tough, so quick tips. 
don't use full sentences, abbreviate when you can, and instead of more words, use bigger words. Like check out resume action verbs and just use the whole bunch of those. It might help to write it down in a Word document first and then copy and paste it onto the application. You'll put in the hours spent per week on each activity and the number of weeks spent per year. It doesn't have to be exact, but at the same time, don't overdo it because it has to make sense. When there are only 24 hours in a day and like six or more of them are in school, plus you have other activities, like there's only so much that you can do. So don't put too much pressure on yourself in real life or on this application. Your best activities are the ones that you've done like from ninth grade to 12th grade. So that kind of also means no break senior year, sorry. Another tip, highlight the ones that help you tell your story, like the ones that connect to your career goals and your talents and your passions, the ones that are a part of your overall application theme. And when you put in your activities, put them in order of the ones that are most important and most influential in your lives, the ones that are representative of you and are impressive. Put those first and then continue on from there. And they have these little black arrows at the top right of each activity so that no matter where you put it in, you can then look back and switch the order so that it's the best it could be. And another tip, when you write about it, write about it in the present tense. Because in the end, a good list is the kind of list that helps the college look at it and say, ah, I see where you can contribute to this campus. And I also did a video on the best extracurricular activities for college applications, so you can check that out too. Next is essays. And now you get to show a glimpse of you and your home, your community, and your school, and you get to connect that to giving them a glimpse of you on their campus thriving. Pretty much the topics have stayed the same for the last few years. So if you're that go-getter out there who's starting early, I see you. I just want to tell you this though. If you start your essay before August of senior year, keep a copy of your essay outside of the application because it'll get erased in the end of July when they take down the system and reboot it up again and go live in August. More tips, the application auto saves for you as you write, but I always suggest that you do it on a Word document or a Google document and then copy and paste it into the application when you're done. You can click here to view your essay in a larger field box and then you can also use this box to be able to check and adjust any formatting that may have not copied over when you pasted it over. And clicking continue when you're done saves all of your edits. I will tell you formatting could take a second. So give yourself time. Under additional information, there are two optional writing sections. Good news, these are not essays. You can use bullet points. The first one, you can tell them how COVID affected you. You can also share whether you did something great and started something new, or if you were negatively affected by it. The second one is a chance for you to tell anything major that you may have had to overcome. It could also be an achievement, like something that you couldn't fit on any other spot in your application. Another tip, if you're explaining something that's negative, keep it positive. So it sounds like you're an overcomer instead of making excuses. And if you do it, just make sure again that it's something new. Now there's some colleges that let you put your classes and grades in on your own instead of waiting for your counselor to send their transcript. And then when you go to do it, they have this cute little guide box that's there to help you. And um, you just click that you have a copy of your transcript and then you put in the exact names and the course numbers and you just be really honest about it. Put all of your information in. It takes a really long time, but just keep whispering to yourself. It's worth it. 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 Um, again, be honest because they will compare your final transcript, which they will ask your counselor for, to what you put down. And if there are any discrepancies, it'll be bad. And then you can check a box when you're done putting in all the classes for each grade. So check here to see if any of your colleges on your list require you to self-report. If none of your colleges appear on the required list, then you get to skip it. And remember I told you that the My Colleges tab was really important? You gotta see this. On this side, it lists what's needed to apply for every college. Everything that they want, essays, scores, supplemental essays, questions, recommendation letters, fees, deadlines, like it's all there. And here, each individual college can ask any college specific questions that they want to ask you. I will tell you that they often use these to decide who gets in. So take your time with these. So every college has different questions, but usually they all ask you to put in the term and the year that you're gonna start, whether you're applying early or regular admission. And you'll do that for every single one of your colleges. And if you're applying early decision, you'll also need to invite your counselor to sign it and you'll have to invite a parent to sign it too. Some colleges ask a few questions and some ask a lot. Oh, and watch this. So let's say you put down as an activity, I don't know, let's say ROTC, right? It's not just going to show up here for this college. Look, look. If I go to another application, the box for ROTC is already checked. 
Now that could be a good thing or a bad thing because maybe there's something that you only want to do at one college, but you don't want to do it in another college. You will have to go through each application before you submit it and just make sure that it's exactly the way you want it. But on the other hand, if you want to do it everywhere, that's a plus, it's already there for you. Ooh, and be careful of two things. Sometimes when you click major, there are extra choices available on the drop down menu that are not actual majors at the college. I don't know if it's some sort of test or something, but be careful. Check the college's website before you click on it on the common application. And depending on how you answer questions about your major, some colleges will also let you submit additional materials like a resume, a portfolio, website links. You can include videos or research material. It's just more things showing off how wonderful you are. And number two, sometimes it won't show that a college requires a supplemental essay on the side, but after you picked a major or after you picked a program or after you picked a scholarship, then bam, there it is, another supplemental essay. Just remember, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. My biggest two tips for supplemental essays are this. One, wait until August 1st. And that's probably the only time that you're gonna hear me tell you to wait to apply. In the case of supplemental essays, a lot of times they change every year and the new ones are posted in August 1st. So I don't want you to waste your time on an essay that's gonna change. The second tip is do your research and answer the questions as specific to each school as you possibly can. I mean, we're talking, talk about the programs you plan to join, the classes you plan to take, how the school will help you meet your goals. Like look up their programs, look up their faculty, look up the research that is being done by them in your field and talk about that stuff. Like if you're feeling stressed about this though, I do want you to know that I have a whole video on writing supplemental essays. That's pure gold, if I do say so myself. So check that out too, when you finish this. If you have to do a disciplinary essay, the best answer is just lay out the facts about what happened, why, or what you could have done differently in less than four sentences, then focus on what you learned, uh, how you changed, and what difference you've made as a result of going through that situation. It's also the place where you'll put in your counselor's information to send your transcripts and put in your contact information for recommenders. To do that, just click on a college, any college, then click recommenders and FERPA, then complete release authorization, Check that box that you understand the authorization and click continue. To fill out the FERPA release authorization, check the first box to authorize your high school to send your records and to allow your counselor and your teachers to send letters of recommendation. They also ask if you wanna waive your rights, which is your right to view all of your recommendations. There really is only one answer to that one waive your rights <laughs> because you're just saying i'm not over my teacher's shoulders what did you write what did you write what did you write what did you write there's no pressure if they say wonderful things about me it's because it's true so pick somebody that you trust and waive them click i understand that my selection pertains to all colleges because once you do this it will automatically apply to all of your other colleges on your list then sign date click save. And now you get to invite your recommenders. If your school uses Naviance, you won't be able to select a counselor or a teacher for recommendation letters using the common application because your school has its own process. So you can only invite non-academic recommenders like coaches or employers on the common app. But if your school doesn't use Naviance, put in the person's name and their email address. Ask them before you invite them though. That's another major tip right there. Some people get major attitudes when you just get emails. Like you didn't even ask me, would you think I have to write these recommendation letters? Like so Seriously, they get mad. So ask them in advance. Like I also have a video on how to ask teachers for recommendation letters. You should check that out. It's really good too. Another reason why you want to ask them personally in advance is because some people prefer to send their recommendation letters in the mail. So then in that case, you won't put the email address in because that's only going to complicate things. Just put their name in and then give them a stamped envelope and they'll send out your recommendation letter. Oh, and you can download a personalized form for teachers that want to send it in the mail. You still need to go in for every single college and go to the recommenders and the FERPA section and the names of your recommenders will appear in the drop down. but then you have to actually assign them in order for them to actually get their invite though. And for each college that allows you to submit extra letters, go to other recommenders. Once your recommender accepts your invitation, you'll be able to keep track of the status of their letter for each college, AKA check up on them, make sure they're doing what they said they were gonna do. If you need to make changes or updates or if the deadline's approaching and the letter has still not been submitted, you can click manage recommenders to resend the invitation. Look for the refresh arrow next to the trash can and they will send them another invitation which you can follow up with a gentle reminder in person because it is a favor. 
The recommenders and colleges will not be able to see that you have an advisor in there, but it might be helpful to you. So, so once you invite an advisor, click on enable preview and your, your advisor will be able to see your application preview with everything that you put on it. Or you could just print it out for them and let them take a look at it. And when you're finished with your college application, you can also click submit on the My Colleges tab or on our fifth tab, the dashboard. On the dashboard, you can see again, all of the colleges that you're thinking about applying to, and it'll tell you which things you've already completed, what you still need to do for each college, and they'll even remind you of the deadline. That one's passed, but they warned me. My advice through this process though, is to stay organized. Every college has their own specific requirements, deadlines, application fees, and supplements. And here's where I'm supposed to say, hey guys, click on the link below to see my spreadsheet or checklist to help you stay on top of it. But because I love you, I'm gonna tell you that the Common Application has made you a free personalized checklist called Applications Requirement Grid. Click on it. It will help you stay organized. It will keep you on track of everything. You can see the deadlines, you can see the supplements. So now that you know all that, you know which application you need to work on first. When you filled out everything, see all those green check marks? Yes! <laughs> Congratulate yourself, all of that work. You earn those check marks and then use the preview button on the My Colleges tab because it will show you what each section of your application will look like to the college's admissions team. Check it, make sure you see what's actually there because sometimes you put stuff in and it could turn out missing. Read through it because once you click submit, that's it. You can't go back. <laughs> I'm serious though, you really can't. You submit your application to each college one by one. So if you send out the first one, you're like, crap, there's a mistake. If you fix it, all the colleges after that will get the correct one. You only have to call one college. Oh, and here's another tip. Print out and date your print preview just before submitting so that you have a hard copy of the latest edits of your application, just in case, you never know. And that will bring you to our payment and fee waiver screen. Now, once you pay, keep going. That is not the last page. And a lot of people think it is, but if a page to sign your application doesn't come up right away, just wait. Another mistake people make is they click back and then they end up paying twice. It could seriously take a minute. If a page does not come up to sign, give the common app a call, let them know. They will walk you through what you need to do. Otherwise just sign and date the affirmations. And then, then after all of your hard work, you are done! Yes! Woo! It was something, but you got it done. This is a testimony of all that you've been through, all of your accomplishments. I am proud of you. I hope you're proud of you. I hope you're taking a moment just to clap it up for yourself. No, seriously, we don't know what the colleges are gonna do on their side, but you have already done a lot. So now each college will send you an email. They're gonna give you an ID and an online portal account on their college website. Make sure. This is where things fell apart for me. <laughs> First place I can tell you, make sure you set up and log into your portal at each school so that you can track the status of your application throughout the process. They're gonna take you through everywhere from acceptance to enrolling. So you really wanna stay on top of that. And if you have any questions, of course, I'm here to help. I respond to every single comment in the comment section, but the Common App is also here to support you. They are available 24 seven. And there you can see frequently asked questions or you can contact a support team member. You can also email them at appsupport at commonapp.net. And because I love you, here's a bonus tip. You just filled out an application to make it easier for you to apply to a lot of colleges all at once. People apply on here to a whole bunch of colleges they don't even care about. So go over to the website of the college that you love most. Sign up for updates, a virtual visit, a virtual event, something to let them know that they're special and not just another college on your list. Make them feel special. Trust me, if you do, it'll make you more special to them.